Today we're doing a fuel filter delete on a 2010 Dodge. This is a fleece fuel filter delete. Fleece offers fuel filter deletes for the 03 to 07 5.9s, 07 and a half to 09 6.7 trucks, and then the fourth gen 2010 and up trucks. We get a lot of questions on this install, so we kind of wanted to walk through it. The engine compartment's pretty cramped here, so we're gonna do it in a couple different ways here. I'm gonna try to film as much as I can from the camera, then we're gonna try to GoPro the rest of it. So, uh, relatively easy install, shouldn't have any trouble with it, but kind of do a little unboxing here of what comes in the fuel filter deletes. So this is for the 2010 models. Um, the fuel filter delete is actually getting the stock fuel filter off of the side of the engine. What that does, obviously, what that does is just opens up your engine compartment, gives you a little bit more room to work on everything. Well, the common rails actually have the return fuel line going from the CP3 uh, that also links up with the return fuel from the rail and they run together through the block that the fuel filter is attached to uh, and then it goes back to the tank. So this eliminates that and what the fuel filter delete does is it actually just ties in the return line. So you can see that with this block, this block's gonna mount to the engine. You'll see that and the fleece unit is very nice, got their name on it. All laser etched, this is all CNC stuff. So uh, the return lines will go on either side of this. It's actually got a port for a water and fuel, for your water, your stock uh, water and fuel sensor will actually go back in this. So it's a really nice unit. So that's what you're doing. Um, now, obviously you don't wanna do a fuel filter delete on your truck if you don't have a FAST or an air dog or uh, a fuel lab or aeromotive fuel system, something that obviously gives you filtration uh, and you just don't need the stock fuel filter anymore. So don't be putting a fuel filter delete on your truck if you don't have some other type of fuel filter on there. So let's get started with the install. Okay, here is a look at the fuel filter as it sits on our 2010 Dodge on the side of the engine block. Now you can see that once this fuel filter is removed, this is really gonna open us up uh, and give us a little bit, area, little bit better area to work and a lot more uh, room inside the engine compartment. So the first thing that we do is the fuel drain valve. If there's any residual fuel in the fuel bowl, the fuel drain valve right here, we're gonna go ahead and open that up and let the fuel out, have a container underneath of there to catch it. Now, uh, while the fuel is draining, we're going to go ahead and loosen the three bolts that hold the fuel filter to the, to the block. The 10 metrics here, here, and then on the back side of the fuel filter that you cannot see there. Uh, there are two electrical connectors on this fuel bowl. Those electrical connectors are located right here. And then another electrical connector right here on the end of my screwdriver there. So we will unhook those and then we will simply sit the bowl to one side here and then we're gonna disconnect the lines from it. And once I get the bowl laid out on its side here, it'll give me a little bit better connection, a little bit better look at the connection so I can show you how to, how to do those. Uh, now taking the the supply lines off of the fuel filter canister so the fuel filter canister can come out. There's a red lock on this side of the, uh, on the other side of the fuel line. We've already removed the red lock. It's just two tabs to take it off. Uh, this white tab on the back is the actual release for this fuel line and it's very difficult to get. So you have to actually push in the very center of it and then apply a little bit of pressure on it and it should come off like that right there. Okay, so the fuel line is already off from the air dog. In the instructions, it tells you to take your intake air horn off. You can do that, that's fine. But if you take this fuel filter out by itself, it will actually come out without having to take the air horn off. This is a picture of the fuel filter canister coming out unbolted from the frame out there. So you don't have to remove the intake horn to get this off. It will actually slide right past it. Uh, so here's the original fuel filter canister. First thing that we did here in removing the bracket that holds the fuel filter is we cut the two zip ties here and here that hold the factory wiring harness into the bottom of this bracket. The next thing that we did was we simply 
took the wiring harness off of the stock bracket and tried to get these out. They, the push pins out, they didn't want to come out. Then the next step is to remove the two 17 metric, or I'm sorry, you want to disconnect the stock return line. And this is, these, these are the return lines. This is the return line coming from the fuel filter. Uh, it is tied in with the return line coming from the CP3. The two of those meet here. The two of those meet here. This fitting, this fitting is 17 metric. Once you have removed the stock fit, the stock line for the CP3, remove this fitting, uh, and then you will remove this fitting here at the end where the other return line goes in. Uh, and then we're going to remove these two bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and hook the old GoPro up here and let you see us do that. So working on these fittings here. Here's the front fitting out. rear fitting and this is the return line from the back of the head going uh, that is joining up with the other two return lines and it all three of those connections rail CP3 back of the head, all three of those connections will be returning directly back to the tank. The banjo bolt, back side of that. All right, and now the final step is just to remove the plate. There's two 10 metric bolts here and here. Hopefully you can see that. Two 10 metric bolts, we're gonna go ahead and loosen those up. And then underneath of the two wiring harnesses at the bottom, underneath of these two stock wiring harnesses, there is another bolt here where my finger is pointing. Excuse me. Another 10 metric bolt tucked away in there. That one has to come out as well. Our plate very carefully. You want to just, and your washers, don't worry about the washers on the return line. You will not be using them back. Fleece supplies you with new ones. You want to just lift the bracket straight out. So here's a look at uh, the bracket that the fuel filter is actually mounted to. So I'll kind of show you this outside of the truck. So the fuel filter is bolted up like this, okay? This is a stock inlet uh, lift pump line, and then this is the outlet to the seven to the uh, CP3. Once you get that out, that gives you access to this. Running along in this channel here, there is a wiring harness, stock wiring harness. It's got zip tie straps around either side of that. You just cut those off. There's a mounting bolt here. Then there are two mounting bolts right here for to, that mounts this whole plate to the engine. And then the truck's return lines are bolted here. There's a banjo bolt here and a banjo bolt here. And that's where the return lines go. The, re, the return fuel, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't go 
there's no ports in here to get it into to the fuel filter. It, it has no filtration. It just simply passes through here. That's what the fleece block's gonna do. Fleece block is gonna take place of right here, of the top part of that bracket. So there's a look at the bracket. Now that we have everything out of our engine bay, we're gonna begin our installation of our fuel filter delete. First thing that we've got to do is we have to get our water and fuel sensor out of the stock unit. Uh, this is just a 24 metric socket and, it, and it's not tight inside the stock canister. You just get you a socket, deep well socket, and that'll keep you from tearing it up just if you just use hand pressure. It's got a seal on it. So this goes into the bottom of the fleece block. Make sure not to cross thread it. And you don't have to get this super, super tight. Just make sure that you get it tight enough to where it doesn't leak. Don't break it off. All right, so that's got our fuel filter delete block ready to go into the truck. Okay, your next step before you put the fuel filter block in is on the, uh, the two fittings that came out of the truck. They both have got sealing washers on them. With a rubber sealing surface in the center of them. Fleece sends you back four copper compression O-rings that are sealing O-rings as well. So you wanna go ahead and install those on both of your fittings, this fitting and your banjo fitting as well before you install the fuel filter block back into the truck. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and begin ins installing our fuel filter delete block. The first thing that we wanna do is we just wanna get it back on the engine of the truck before we start worrying about any of the lines. And you can see as it goes to its mounting location that the lines are just about gonna line up perfectly right out of the gate. So we're gonna go ahead and start our bolts now. Okay, now that I've got my two mounting bolts in my fuel filter block, I went ahead and installed my water and fuel electrical connector and ran it in there. So my lines are pretty well lined up right here. So I wanna go ahead and start working on getting my fittings in. So what we've done, just to recap, we have put the fleece fuel filter lead block up there. The two, the two 10 metric bolts that came out your OE hardware, those went back up. Then we put both of our return line fittings in here with a copper compression washer on both sides of the banjo. So there's a copper compression between the block and the banjo fitting here and then a copper compression on the other side of the actual fitting itself. Same thing on the other side, copper, banjo fitting, copper, banjo bolt, same thing there. So we've got all of our banjo fittings in and lined up, all of our coppers on. We are gonna go ahead and tighten down the fleece fuel filter block. We've got our water and fuel sensor hooked up here. Now we're gonna hook up the CP3 return line onto the banjo bolt. So it is just a slip on, push it till it clicks. So we're good there. So everything else is done. Um, you have this stock line that, I don't know if you can see it, this, this is the stock pressure line that comes from the tank. Uh, we're gonna leave that there. The stock, wire for the fuel heater. I will zip tie that back here just to clean up my install. Uh, our two lines that are uh, for the starter, the, the cable there already factory wired, so they're not in the way of anything. And the other wiring harness here that's in the way of our light is not in the way of anything there. So it's okay. So this is a, this install is complete for on this fourth gen truck, this 2010 truck. So uh, no need to bleed anything here. Jump in the truck and start it. Should start right up. You will have an extra bolt that came out of the bottom of the bracket. Don't worry about that. Uh, 
as well. So if you have a question on this installation or any of our other installations, please give us a call. Thank you.